Welcome to Wollongabba, a place that has a long tradition of combat and sporting prowess across time and across cultures. In this video, I'm going to be exploring the history and development of Wollongabba. Welcome to Brisbane's Fight Club. <laughs> what does the name Wollongabba actually mean? According to William Clark, who was a young lad living here in the mid-19th century, it's a compound of two words, Walloon, which means fight talk, and also Gabba, which means a place. Therefore, the place of fighting talk, the Walloon Gabba, Walloon Gabba. Other interpretations of the word indicate it meant whirling water, and that meant it was the water from where the cricket ground is now, flowing through stages, through little lagoons, all the way out west along Stanley Street. And the area was especially noted for the many swamps here, including just over this way here, this is the busway and also the Cross River Rail development. It's incredible to think that in this very busy intersection, this was once a huge wattle grove. And the population here in Wollongabba was one of the highest in all of Southeast Queensland before European settlement. On my right here is part of the development for the Cross River Rail. This side here was originally a pull and pull and the cricket ground is just over that way. There it is over there, there's the cricket ground. And this was the site of tournaments. Warriors would come here from different tribes and test their prowess against warriors from other tribes. It wasn't the Roman Colosseum though, it wasn't really a place of trying to kill your opponent, it was more showing what you could do. So there may be a broken bone, some cuts and abrasions, a lot of dancing around each other. I think the main thing that got bruised here was pride. And up here on what is perhaps the highest point in Wollongabba, there used to be a massive Bora ring. The current Anglican church occupies the site. It was said to be the largest Bora ring on the south side of Brisbane. And in fact, this was a double Bora ring. The large circle was up here. That's Hawthorne Street. The smaller Bora ring was down the road that way, down on the flatter ground, and there was a ceremonial pathway leading up. It was an initiation ceremonial site. The young kippers, the young men, it seems would journey from down there up to here and conduct their uh, rituals into manhood. The previously mentioned William Clark wrote, I remember we boys made an attempt to get a look at the Wollongabba ring and the ceremony held there, but old black fellows guarded the hill making a great noise, like the roar of a bull. And there used to be a large corroboree ground right here, where the Gabba Cricket Ground is now. Apparently, this was one of the largest, or if not the largest, corroboree site in all of the southern areas of Brisbane, what is today Brisbane. The indigenous people who lived in the Wollongabba area, they were the people who used to go up north a little bit to Kangaroo Point and raid the early crops that were growing there from the Moreton Bay penal settlement as a way to try and starve out the settlement. The area was called One Mile Swamp by the early European settlers, as it was one mile from Brisbane. Development of the area was increased as bullock teams would converge here, coming along Logan Road, Cleveland Road and Ipswich Road. Annerley Road was part of the old Ipswich Road, also known as the Bogo Track, and was originally an indigenous trackway. This whole area was set aside as a water reserve simply because it was so low-lying and so swampy and there was so much water here. Today, of course, it's all been excavated out and changed and re-landscaped. The site that the Gabba Cricket Ground sits on now used to be a large lagoon. And back in the 1850s, 1860s, the European children who were living in this area would go swimming there along with their indigenous neighbours. In addition to all the water and lagoons and swampy area here, there was also very good clay and that helped get start a brick making industry here. Some of the bricks used in the construction of the dry dock at South Brisbane were constructed with bricks made right here in Wollongabba. It was in 1863 that the Clarence Hotel opened. It was built to serve food and refreshments to the Bullock teams passing through from Ipswich on their way to the South Brisbane wharves. As such, this part of Wollongabba quickly became a busy shopping district. Now this is really cool. See that building across the road with the chimney? That's Pollock's Shop House. It dates from about 1865 and would probably be the oldest building still standing in Wollongabba. Also, the brickwork to make that building 
was most likely sourced right here at Woolloongabba at one of the old brickworks. I'm here at the Five Ways and across the road is Gabba Central, you can see it there. On that side, back in 1868, opened the Woolloongabba Hotel. And it was there for many years and then demolished and rebuilt and then finally demolished. In 1869, the One Mile Swamp Post Office opened. It was near the Five Ways, but soon after changed its name to the Woolloongabba Post Office. In 1883, the Diamantina Orphanage opened. In 1901, it became the Diamantina Hospital. In 1959, it became the Princess Alexandra Hospital and was named by and named after Her Royal Highness Princess Alexandra to mark the centennial of Queensland. It was in 1884 that a railway line was extended from the south coastline up to here, to the, uh, to the five ways. And it continued on that way through what is now the Cross River Rail development. It was a common sight here for, for decades. A man walking in front of a steam train right through the five ways with his bell making sure that the train could clearly cross the five ways so that no one collided with it and then it would continue on that way where the buses go today the trains would continue on that way but then they would go up to uh, South Brisbane like the dry dock and that area there where the wharves used to be and you realize just how hilly Woolloongabba actually is I tend to just come through this area on the highway you race straight through but walking around it that's beautifully hilly spiders are out. These little houses behind me are known as the Merton Road Cottages. They date from 1885. Interestingly, the one in the middle is an early example of a duplex. This here is Quarry Street, and as the name suggests, there was once a quarry here back in the 19th century. In 1886, a little boy by the name of James Hansen slipped and fell and was drowned in this quarry. There'd been some heavy rain just before. The reason why he fell in was because the quarry was unfenced. Oh, I was walking with a frog. Hey. Hello. How are you doing? We watch all your videos. Oh, great. Thank you. Ah. Thank you so much. I'll put that in the video. Yeah, <laughs> in 1888, the Princess Theatre opened. It has been many things in its time. A public hall, plays and dances were put on there. Later, it was a clothing factory. There was a worldwide roller skating craze in the 1880s, and so the venue became a skating rink. In 1912, it reopened as a cinema and renamed as the Princess Theatre. The first movie they showed was Attacked by a Lion. The local area, however, was a rough one. On one occasion in 1920, a group of youths, described as hoodlums, took control of the entire theatre for around half an hour. A fight broke out, and injuries included broken teeth and a nasty cut to the head. Curiously, the film being shown that night was Mary Pickford's The Hoodlum. I'm here at Clarence Corner, and I was stopped by a fellow by the name of Jonathan, who said he used to be the councillor for this area, which is really amazing, and now he's running for the Lord Mayor's position, so good luck, um, Jonathan, I hope you make it. And he, but he's told me about an old drinking fountain just down here across the road from the Princess Theatre. I missed it, I walked past it. So I'm gonna go back with his directions and see if I can find it. And I've just found it, here it is, old drinking fountain. Look at this, I walked right past it before. An old drinking fountain. The chap was telling me that when he was a councillor here, when the bikeway was coming through, they wanted to knock this out, they wanted to destroy it. And he put up a fight to save her, which great that he did. Wonderful, little tiny piece of history. Again, that's what happens when you start looking around your neighborhood. And I should take a lesson from that because I walked right past it. Just passing this old McGee's drapery and you can see some of the original tile work right here. Isn't that beautiful? It's been covered up by paint, this grey paint which is peeling away. And it's revealing some of the old, the old tiles. This is at 588 Stanley Street. Across the road is Clarence Corner. Old shops along here and you can see the old glass work up there. See all those?
Just behind me there is the Clarence Corner Hotel. It was opened in 1889. It replaced an original Clarence Hotel from 1863. Now that hotel was built to serve the Bullock teams that were coming up from Ipswich along old Ipswich Road. So that's why the hotel was originally put there. The new hotel, the current one from 1889, now served a growing urban population. I'm standing outside what is, says here is the Chalk Hotel. This was originally the Railway Hotel and I think that this Chalk Hotel is indefinitely closed. I've never been here before. Look at all the writing up there, all the chalk work. See that? So yes, this was the Railway Hotel built in 1889. That's the Norman Hotel behind me. It opened in 1889. I've only ever been there once and that was back in the mid 90s. I was at film school then. I was in first year and we were shooting a short film upstairs. We got permission to, to go and shoot in some of the empty rooms. Now, I don't believe in the supernatural at all. Spirits and ghosts and all that sort of thing. It's just not me. But I can tell you when we were up there shooting, there was definitely a vibe up in one of those empty rooms. It certainly gave me the shivers. And I've never been back in there since. I don't know what it was there. Maybe I was just having a bad day. Just felt very uncomfortable being there. I'm sure it's lovely downstairs. I uh, would love to go back and, and have a proper look and have a meal, but I haven't been brave enough yet. That's the Phoenix Building, built in 1889. Drapery stores were very prominent within that building for many years. I understand the interior of the building has now been substantially changed, but certainly the outside has retained its historic charm. The Broadway Hotel. It was opened in 1890 and it was designed in the style of substantial English corner pubs. And it was a very successful and very popular venue in its day. A fire in 2010 did considerable damage to it and that's when it closed. A second fire in 2018 pretty much finished it off. Structurally it still looks pretty good despite all the fire damage and the damage done since by squatters and vandals. It looks like it could be saved. I really wish it will be. Who knows, maybe someone will put some money into it and get it looking good again before the 2032 Olympics. The very lovely Red Brick Hotel. That was opened in 1890, also known as Burke's Hotel. I understand it's quite unaltered on the inside. I can hear the death call of magpies. Gabba Cricket Ground. Land was set aside here in 1895 for the establishment of a cricket ground. The very first match was held the following year. That first match was between members of the Queensland Parliament and the press. Guess who won? Nobody. It was a draw. In the year 1900, there was an outbreak of the bubonic plague here in Brisbane. It actually started here in Wollongabba and specifically, it started here on Hawthorne Street. The fellow who got it first actually survived, but 57 other people in Brisbane died that year from the plague. Hawthorne Street here was actually quarantined for quite a while. Residents couldn't get in or out until uh, they were given the all clear. In 1905, a severe storm raged through the area. 
The local newspaper made fun of a bakery by calling the building well ventilated. This here is the old post office. Now this is wonderful. I love this building. Look at this. That's what a post office should look like. This post office replaced an earlier one around the corner. This was built in 1905 and upstairs you can see obviously there's another floor. The top floor is where the postmaster lived with his family. This ceased to be a post office in 1994. And just across the road there's yet another old building because there's lots of them here. This one's got like a, a dedication stone. Brisbane Associated Friendly Societies Dispensary, February 1920. Oh, I've never seen this before. That there is the old Woolloongabba Police Station. It opened in 1913, was also a barracks for officers to reside in. It closed down in 1993. I'm on Ipswich Road, that's the uh, Drummond Golf, Golf Store. On this side here used to be the Broadway Theatre. It opened in 1924 and it had a room out the back where fractious babies could be placed for a while so that they wouldn't upset the audience members. It's a rather good idea. This here is the Hotel Morrison, opened in 1927. It replaced an earlier hotel which was built across the road. That was the Britannia Hotel. That burnt down. Ironically, it was actually built on a swamp. This was all one mile swamp, so a hotel built on a swamp burnt down. Anyway, this is its successor, the Hotel Morrison. And in this aerial photograph from the early 1970s, you can see that the Hotel Morrison was thankfully saved from the bulldozers. The new Southeast Freeway just missed it. And a good thing too. inside the Hotel Morrison. I couldn't come in here and not have a drink. And that's it. It's only a light. It's only 10.30. <laughs> Across the road is a costume hire place. Some years ago, I hired a costume there. I was going to an event at a library and I was going to be Mr. Darcy. This is what I looked like. This is what I came up with in the costume. What do you think of passable Mr. Darcy or or not. I can never make these things work. In 1929, the Great Depression began. At this time, there were two gangs in the area, the White Stars at the Clarence End and the Blue Stars at the Gabba end. Frequent violent fights between the two occurred. This here is the lovely and rather Catholic looking Holy Trinity Anglican Church. This was opened in 1930. It is however the third church on the site. The first one blew down in a storm in 1874. The second one was destroyed by fire in 1929. So this is the replacement but it hasn't survived totally unscathed. In 2014, it suffered a million dollars damage in a massive storm that passed through here. over to 34 Sword Street and the reason why I've come here is because there is an old 1942 World War II bomb shelter at least what's left of it now here it is 
You'll see a couple of these behind the Pineapple Hotel further up on Main Street at Kangaroo Point. You've got to remember that during the war, this was all covered all the way around. This, I would have been inside now. It was all big, heavy blocks, concrete blocks all the way around as an emergency bomb shelter, just in case, because none of these were ever used. And uh, today it's a very convenient little picnic spot in this tiny little park. This here is the end of Logan Road. This was sealed off from the five ways in 1969 when the trams were taken out of service. The trams used to run right up through here and then continue on towards um, South Brisbane. And I remember this place over here, I went here once, it was a Thai restaurant. Now it's a nothing. What a shame, very, very old building this one. Yeah, Thai Rose Cafe and Bar. There's some old Brisbane tooth here. Look at this. This would have been quarried at Kangaroo Point. In the late 1960s, a traffic control centre was opened in Woolloongabba, complete with purple carpet, purple drapes, purple pants, purple shoes, a purple floral shirt, and a joystick. Up here on Hawthorne Street, the Anglican Church is just across the road. This old building here is the old traffic control centre. In 1972, the first section of the South East Freeway was opened. Many shops and businesses and homes in Wollongabba had been demolished to make way for the new freeway. Whereas in the 1970s, the damage was above ground, the new Cross River Rail project will be largely underground. The Wollongabba station will be 27 metres below ground surface. This entire cricket ground is going to be demolished ahead of the 2032 Brisbane Olympic Games and a brand new stadium is going to be built in its place. That certainly has repercussions for the old school which is just around the corner. So what's going to happen is the East Brisbane State School is going to be closed and the students moved either to a new school or sent off to other schools within the catchment area. I'm not sure what the status of the school is. Some of the buildings here are heritage listed and they will be kept but incorporated into the new development here. I think one of them is going to become a museum. Well, that wraps up this history walk around Wollongabba. What I found is history does indeed repeat itself. This area right here where I'm walking on one side was a corroboree ground and on the other side was a pullen pullen where there were tournaments of prowess and physical strength and uh, technique and cunning. We still have that going on here today, right over there at the Gabba. Warriors, sports people coming together in feats of prowess and strength and cunning. I find that fascinating about history, that the same things can keep happening again and again, century after century, even across different cultures, but in the one place. It's as if there's something about this area here that makes people want to come here and, uh, and test their mettle. And of course, this was a place of a lot of people uh, before European settlement, many camps here, and also many trackways were converging on this area here on the five ways. Again, history is repeating itself. This area here before European settlement is in some ways still exactly the same as what it is today. The same things are happening here. Fascinating. I love that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It really does help the channel and I'll see you again soon.